Man, just amazing to see to see that. We're spending some time here in the last few weeks looking at and being intentional and challenging in our understanding of this Thanksgiving season. Um, because what we know, what we know is that it starts as, as quick as it can um, that the consumption of Christmas happen, happens, right? I mean, you can, can't go into any convenience store without seeing, or any department store or any store without seeing Christmas has already begun. But we have been focusing the last few weeks on what you just saw there. Just saying to God, man, here's what I'm thankful for. Thank you so much for this. I, have, I mean, I have more than 10,000 reasons to thank you. I mean, we could just let people go on, go on and go on. And what we've been looking at is that, man, this thankfulness that we have, this season that we have, if we really call it Thanksgiving, we are thankful, but what's our response to that thanks? How do we respond to that? How do we respond to that in our homes and in our relationships and in our dorm rooms? How do we respond when we say to God, thank you so much for what you've done for me, and here's a response that I have? I mean, it's really a genius concept. Think about it. I mean, as early as, as, as our kids are just as small as they can even get it. My little, my little boy, Trace, 20 months old, and he can barely say anything. But I will, we, will, we will say, hey, as soon as we give you a Cheerio, I want to hear what? Thank you, you know? I mean, and he's, like, he's like, yeah, thank, you know, he says it. And there's something different about when, he, when you give him something, and then he walks away and he doesn't say it. And he just feels like, oh, you know, I'm the prince. I should have a Cheerio, you know. Or when you give him something and he takes it and then, he's, you know, and then he, you know, he says, thank you. And he walks away with a smile on his face. There's something different about our thankfulness. Something happens. And we've been looking at, well, we've been looking at our scripture text in 1 Chronicles 16. And David, in, the, in what is called the Song of Thanksgiving, he's saying to us that our thanksgiving, our thanksgiving that we have, if we're truly thankful, if we're truly practical in our thanksgiving to God, then something happens in our heart. Our heart is changed, just like a, a little baby. A little baby, something happens. Like they, they feel like, man, there's something happening in there that I'm truly, I'm truly thankful for what I'm given. And, 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 and David, we, we've been seeing in this scripture, David was saying things like your heart, when you're truly thankful to God, your, your heart will rejoice. I mean, you guys know this, but you've dealt with people. You've dealt with people in your own lives who you can just tell aren't thankful people. They're, 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 they're just ungrateful for, I mean, or they're entitled. I mean, that's the, the buzzword now. I mean, I mean they, they feel like everything should be given to them. And just, I mean, when you, I mean, aren't they just not happy? I mean, just you think of your own, I mean, you can just see them and they're, they're just not, there's something that's overflowing from them that's really cruddy. I mean, it's just bleh. I mean, and no one wants to be around them, even though they feel like they should, they deserve this. They feel like they should have it, but they're just not. And maybe that's been us, where we just felt like I deserve this and, and nobody wants to be around us because we stink. You know, I mean, they're, you know, you've got crud coming from you. I mean, because we're just, we feel ungrateful. But, you know, as David was, as, as we're looking this about Thanksgiving, about being thankful, there's something that happens within us when we're truly thankful to God. But, it also calls for a response. And what we've been looking at in the last couple of weeks, we've looked at a couple, uh, a couple of things. We've looked at the past, we've looked at the present, and in our past, are we thankful for what God has brought us through? Are we thankful when we look back on, on our lives, are we thankful for what God has done? And maybe he's moved you through a wilderness period. Maybe he's moved you to where you are now, and you can look back on it and say, man, God, thank you that you brought me to this place. Thank you. God, you have history with me. And I'm thankful for that. And when David said we're thankful, what do we do? We make known the deeds. In Hebrew, it's called yada. We make known. It's not, it's, it's not just uh, when Hebrews are like, hey, in, you know, in Hebrew, hey, thank you, thank you. No, it's not that. When you are truly thankful, you make yada. You, you let everybody know how great God is. And I've told you last week, there's been people who've been texting me back, you know, telling me, man, this is weird for me to do, but like I'm doing this. And it feels so good to give God thanks and to tell people, yeah, you know, God is good. And people are like, hey, you have a beautiful family. Yeah, you know, God is great. He's taking care of my, you know, my family. So we've been looking at that. And then last week, we, uh, we looked at how, man, when we have, we have so much to be thankful for in the present, we in the present that we can live in the promises of God in the present, that we have a covenant with God that we can live in. And David, when he was writing, he was telling God's people, he said, listen, you have so much to be thankful for because God has you in his covenant as his people. 
That you, when you have said, I love you, Lord, I want to follow you, as you were singing these lyrics today, as you were praying and you were saying, God, I believe in you, as you were holding hands with your family members today, and you were saying, I, whatever faith that I have, God, I believe. You know what you were saying? God, I believe in the covenant and your promise you have for me and for my home. And he said, when you feel that way and when you know that and when you trust in that covenant that you're living in that in the present, then you walk with that as an open display. Then everybody who, everybody who knows you, you are walking around in that faithfulness. It's called it being in an open display, walking blamelessly and walking upright with God. So see, there's response when we're thankful. And that's the thing we've been looking at, that there, there, there's a response to what, you know, what it means for us to, to have thankfulness in our lives. So we have a lot as we're looking at in, uh, today, even as we're looking at, man, now when we look at it, what do we have to be thankful for in our future? Because we've looked in the past, we've looked in the present, and now there's this element of faith that we take out to say, you know, God, I th you've done gr great things, and you're doing great things, and I'm seeing that happen. But God, what about the future? And do I have, do I, what do I have to be thankful for in the future? So as today, we're going to look at that. I, wa I want you guys, I'm challenging you to get yourselves there in faith. Because it's one of the key mistakes, it's one of the biggest mistakes as believers is our understanding of the future. Like I could say in here, even uh, the wide, the, just a huge range. I could say, hey, what about you? You feel like you're, you're going to heaven today? I can ask you the question. You feel like you're going to heaven? And I, and I promise you, I've, I've done this before. I promise. And I've asked people, and they say, I, I think so. I think, I, or, you know, I don't know. Yesterday I thought I was, nah. Today, I had a bad day today. I don't think I'm going to heaven today. And, and, and I mean, it, it, it seems so circumstantial, right? We, we feel that way because we're, we're so unsure about our future. And, and when we look in Scripture, it's not like that. We, can, we have a future that we can really believe in and we can be thankful for. There's no other area in our life that we can do that. There's no other area in our life where we can just say with full, I mean, you know how people are. We're, we're people, right? And we deal with people all the time. And so there's no other area in our life that we can say without a doubt how it's going to be. We just won't, we're just not that way. We just won't put our faith in, in, in people and sometimes even people who are close to us because we have had history with them, right? But as we look here, we have questions like this to God. You know, God, what do you have in store for me? I'm like, I'm, I mean, some of our college kids are here today and, and, and they're in the midst of it, right? Aren't they in the midst? Some of you are here and you've been there and you're like, man, they're right in the midst of it, trying to figure out purpose. And they're trying, I mean, some of us maybe still are there and we're like, God, what, what do you have in store for me? How do, how do I, how do we, how do we affect our future that God has for us? These are questions that we may have, you know, what part does God play? What part do you play in the future of my family? What part do you play in the future of my job, in the future of my relationships? God, what part do you play? All of these good questions. And when we have clarity on these, we find out that, that God has a lot to do with it, that God has the most to do with it. God has everything to do with it. And we have a lot to be thankful for in that area. So we see in our series scripture as, it, as a culmination as David in Psalm, or excuse me, in 1 Chronicles 16, 28. Okay, I'm going to go through this pretty quick because I'm also going to turn us over to another place. But I want you to see this. As David comes to, the, he's saying, talking to, the, to God's children, he's saying, man, I'm so, um, this song of thanksgiving, we're, we're going to tell God thanks and we're going to show him how, how, um, how thankful we are that the Ark of the Covenant has, been, has come back to us. Remember, God's word in the Ark of the Covenant, they called that the testimony. That was God's word to them. And so David was, was, was rejoicing this. And so he got to the chief musician. He says, I want, I want to lift up this song. And I'm challenging you today, to, if you weren't here in the last couple of weeks, to look back on that and to say, what does it mean to have a song of thanksgiving? But we pick up in verse 28. He says, give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. As Jameson was up here and he was describing, he was describing what it means to be, you know, maybe a little bit outward in our, in our worship. And he was saying, hey, if you want to raise your hand, raise your hand. If you want to say things, if you just want to, just want to praise God. If you want to lift that up, if you want to sing your heart out, whether you think you can sing or not, and some of you can't. I mean, that's fine. And some of you maybe can, and you just didn't know, and it's like a holy angels or whatever. If you want to do that, you know how healthy 
that is? Because David is saying, and the chief musician is saying, he's saying, listen, now's the time to let all that out. And this morning as we're reading this, and we're, and we're talking about you know, what it means to be thankful and to, to, to praise God, listen to where this keeps going. It says, tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Personification. You know what this is that David is saying? That, listen, the trees and the rocks, and this is New Testament stuff as well, Nathan. That this is new. I mean, that, you know, what did Jesus say? Listen, if you don't want to worship, and if you don't really want to, to, to really be motivated by and, and thankful for what God has done for you, then, he, then what did Jesus say? I got, I got news for you, that these rocks around me right now can come alive and they'll worship and they'll be thankful. And we read that and we're like, oh, Jesus is just being, you know, he's just trying to get on the people or whatever else. Do you know when we go back over to First Chronicles, what does it say? That the heavens will rejo- rejoice and the earth will be glad and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let these things say and let the sea roar. And all of its fullness. This, this uh, summer, Christy and I got to go to Cape Cod and, and uh, right around the Boston area or whatever. And so we got to see all of the, you know, this. And we don't get to see it much. And so we were watching. And it was, you know, some of the days were kind of cloudy, just like it would be. And, and it was just hitting up against these rocks and just boom. And it, it was just like, man, it was cool because we don't get to see that a lot. And so there's a place that, that through Rockport that you walk up. And, and no joke, it's like, and I was telling her, this is, uh, is kind of... Um, weird because my brother says that there's not a lot of um you know there's not a lot of uh evangelical christians that are up there and really believe you know that that more of it is just reflection or whatever so there's a place through rockport that you go and you go up this little hill and it's right on the point of where this the ocean comes in and it's hitting all these rocks like you would see on a on a video a worship video or whatever and it's just like boom it's just hitting and people are sitting there nobody's like people aren't talking or whatever like, I was weird. I was feeling weird. I was, like, just talking, and people were like, ah, you know, ah, you know, and they're looking out on this, and I'm, wa- and I'm watching. It was like City of Angels, or remember that movie, City of Angels, when they're all sitting on the beach or whatever? That's kind of what it looked like, and, I, and as, I'm, as I was watching that, there was so much reflection in, in their own way, of course, that in, in, in what this meant, right? As I was looking back on this, and I'm saying, man, the sea will roar and rejoice in God's name. That the sea will roar in all of its fullness, and the field will rejoice in all that is in it, and it will praise God. This morning as we're reading this from, from David, and, and he's saying, it's just like, listen, if, if it's not in us, we got, he's like, I got news for you, that it's already all around you already. That everything you see in creation is already lifting up the name of God in thanks. They're saying things like the, <clears throat> the Lord reigns and the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, thanking him. Wow. And then it, clo- it, it, it ends right there in verse 33. It says, for he is coming to judge the earth. What a promise we have to hold on to about that future. And this morning as we're seeing that and we're thinking, man, do we read that with fear? That man, oh my gosh, God is coming someday to judge. He's going to be a holy judge over the, over the earth. And I asked you the question a minute ago. I was like, hey, you know, if I was asked, you, you feel like you're going to heaven. You know what I'm really saying? Do you feel like you have a reward in God? Do you feel like you have a reward that, that when, it, when, it, when it all comes down and God comes back and that's the future for us, what do you have? And I can tell you right now, as for me and my house, we rejoice when he's coming. And we rejoice in that promise because we know there's reward. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, God's coming back and he's reading it. And I didn't think he was coming, but this is like he's reading it, that he's coming back. I'm reading it in a sense for you that there's hope that this God is returning. He goes on to say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercies endure forever. And say, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. That means blessed be God for everything that he's going to bring. I'm thankful for God for everything that he's going to bring on my life. From everlasting to everlasting. 
Now, some of us may think, is that even in the now? Is that like today? Is that tomorrow? Yes, it is. Is that in heaven? Yes, it is. That's everlasting to everlasting. And then it said, and all the people, and I said this last week, said, amen. And they praised the Lord. Verse 36. All the people said, we believe. They said, amen. And they praised the Lord. Amen. So as we're looking in our, as we looked in this text, it, it, we still see, don't we, that there's an element of faith that we have to hold on to. Even sitting where you are today, you are, you right now, you're, it's mixing in there, isn't it? That, do I really believe in the future that God has? Do I really believe that he's coming and that that's going to be a great reward? Do I really believe right now that his mercies are in my life? that his mercies tomorrow and the next day and the next day will be with me. And, it, and it's churning right there. And even when it seems like, like you know, that, that, you, that you have the plan, and even if, you see, if it seems like it's not working out, isn't it the fact that God is still right there with the plan? Even when we feel like we're captive, even if we feel like we're in chains, even if we feel like we're, we're struggling through some type of addiction, even if we feel like that right now, Maybe, we're, yet we're, maybe we're just uncomfortable with life. And this isn't the plan that we had. This isn't the purpose that we thought. This isn't how we want it to work. There's still God in that place. I want us to turn over to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, looking at verse 10. Now, to give you a little bit of background here, Jeremiah, as he's talking about the future, he's the prophet Jeremiah. And he's proclaiming to God's people, he's saying, listen, you may be in captivity. You may feel like you're struggling right now. Things may be uncomfortable to you. You may feel like you're out of place. You may feel displaced. You may feel out of home. But you know what he, this was called? This was called being in exile. And the God's people at the time were in exile. And why were they in exile? I'm just not just going to throw that out there. They were in exile, so they're, they're just fine in exile. When you look back at, at chapter 25, it'll tell you every reason why. It's because at some point, in the situation where they were in with God, they turned their backs. They turned their backs on God. They had heard something. They had, they had went through something. Maybe they went, and, and, but they lost trust in God. And they started to worship other gods. And so they went into exile for 70 years. They were in captivity. But Jeremiah had a word for them from the Lord. In Jeremiah 29.10, it says, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. One of the more quoted scriptures in the faith is Jeremiah 29.11. And we read it in, in this way. We say, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. We love that when we read it. And we, we say, man, this is the God that I serve. Even though that I may, be, I may have turned my back, even though that I may have gone away, even though he is a God who keeps his promise, he is a God who keeps his covenant, even though I'm going through a little bit right now, I know that God still is with me and that he's faithful. And we read this, that even though, yes, that may happen, he is right here with us because his thoughts towards us are for a future and a hope in our lives. But we in the church sometimes stop there at verse 11 because it makes us feel good. And we're like, yes, praise the Lord. Play the song, let's go eat lunch. But when we keep reading, listen to what follows. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. This is the challenging part in the faith, isn't it? Because there's places we read where it makes us feel good, but we forget about there's a cause and effect. That we forget about there's a response. That we're challenged. That God says, listen, it's not a, just a free-for-all. That, you know, oh, yeah, I'm just going to give you great futures and hopes, and you just go live how you want, God's people. It, it doesn't work like that. 
And this right here, when we read, and you, you may have liked Jeremiah 29, 11, and now you don't like it anymore, but I'm just telling you that verse 12, 13, and 14 are just as powerful as verse 11. God brings strong emphasis in verse 11 to his unchangeable plan. In verse 12 through 14, he tells us that this future and hope and prosperity, it waits for those who genuinely call on him with all of their heart. When you love something with just a little bit of your heart, you know that you're not loving something right. If you've ever been in a relationship and you're dealing with that relationship and you really love something with all of your heart and that other person doesn't love you but just with a little bit of their heart, you understand that that doesn't work, right? And we can know that because we've dealt with that. And it's no different from what we read right here that God is saying, yeah, the future and the hope that I have for you and that, I, that you know is waiting for you is waiting for those who genuinely seek God with all of their heart. 12 through 14. Jesus says something similarly in Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Listen to this for all you people who worry in here today. Jesus telling to the people, this isn't read in my Bible, so this must be Jesus speaking. He says, therefore, don't worry. Saying, what, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to have? For all these things are what the people who are pagans, Gentiles, they seek after. People who are away from God. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Did you hear that this morning? Did you hear that in your future? That the heavenly Father, whom you are saying with all of my heart, God, I'm just going to seek you and trust you in this. That it's this God that Jesus in, in the New Testament here in Matthew 6 says, this is your heavenly Father who knows what you need. Young people, what an amazing idea to hold on to this morning. That this is the God that you were serving at your retreat. The God who knows you and knows what you need. And then Jesus goes on to, with, the, with the huge challenge this morning. But seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness and all of these things that you worry about and all of these things that you struggle with and all of these things that you feel like that you need, and all these things that you want, and all these things, seek first God's kingdom, and they will be added unto you. And when I hear that, I hear a future for us. And I hear a future that we have to be thankful for. Amen? As we look this morning, and you have your bulletins with you, there's a few points I want you to take home with you. Okay? We've got a lot to be thankful for. God has established a future for us. It was reiterated by His Son who came here down from, from heaven, who came here before us as man to look us in the eye and say, guess what? There's a great future in this relationship with God and there's a great hope. Everything He said to Jer through Jeremiah the prophet is waiting for you, for those who seek Him with all your heart. Look in your bulletins. There's three points. These are called take-home points. Why are they called that? Because I want you to take them home. There, look at that amazing idea. Take them with you, okay? Each point, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, take one and say, you know, today I'm going to focus on this point today. I'm going to, Kenny challenged me. He said that if I was man enough, I would do this. And hey, are you man enough? Are you woman enough? Okay, to take these points and say, you know what, today I'm going to focus on this one. Let's look at the first one. Our blessed future, our future with God starts with the belief that he is coming back to reward those who serve him. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he's coming back. And he's got a reward for those who serve him. And when we look at that, do you, are you someone who has a full belief in that? And do you live with that in your day? To say, today, man, I'm going out with that belief that that God who created everything is coming back. And there's going to be a great reward that's come with me. Live your day with that, I promise you. There'll be some changes in your day. Second one, our blessed future with God consists of a willing and joyful communion with Him. What did He say in Jeremiah 29, 12 through 14? He said, listen, seek me and you will find me. What was He saying? Be genuine in your experience with me. And what do we say when we, we have communion? When we come up here and we say, man, this is the body broken for you. This is the blood shed for you. For you, for you, God's wanting to connect with you genuinely. And you know what that is? That, that's, that's what we call communion, connecting with Him, praying and seeking Him 
Not with just made up and babbling words is what Scripture would tell us, but with genuine words. Seeking Him, the God of creation who wants to be a friend to you. The third one. Our blessed future will have a lot to do with a lot to do with our choice and whether or not to seek God first. Man, you talk about a point to take home. That's one, man, you're like, man, today I've got a choice. I've got a choice whether or not to live by my own God as the, Israel, as the Israelites did, or today I'm going to say, you know, God, I'm going to believe in you today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live my life with you today. I'm going to make that choice for, with you. Last week I said it. Remember, if you weren't here, Joshua 24, 15, when he's le- sitting in front of the people who were just, just like us, people who are like, yeah, maybe I'll choose them, maybe I won't, maybe I will, maybe I And he said, listen, okay, how about this? You choose what you want, but my family, the ones who just stood up and held hands and we were just praying together and we felt it and this was great, we're choosing today to serve God. And I believe that a lot of, uh, I, I 100% believe it. And you may not, and this may not be a place for you, and you may like, I don't want to follow that guy. He's just weird, whatever. I 100% believe this, that it, your choice on whether or not to put God first in your life, your homes, your families, your marriages is going to depend on, a, a, lot of that's going to, a lot of that choice is going to depend on the result, the result there. And so when I look at this, and I even see when Jeremiah was telling the people, he was reminding them, I told you all this, and you chose not to. And now you're in captivity. But there was hope on the other end. And that's what we saw today. The question looks a lot like this today. Are you going to seek out the future God has for you? Or are you just holding on to the one that, you've, that you have? You may not know what that is. Let's just be honest. You may say, that, I don't know what that is, but I trust that God does. And today I want to hold on to that. Are you going to seek out that future? And I believe that if you are, if you say today, yes, I am, then we have a lot to be thankful for in that future. And this season is the perfect time. Let's pray this morning. Father God, as we're, man, we're really looking at heavy stuff in Scripture this morning. And is there some challenge there, God, to, to really seek you first? so hard our culture father doesn't preach that father we're 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 struggling in our own culture where it just says do what do what's best for yourself make as much as you can for yourself and god today man what a difference father i'm thanking you for turning us on our heads and saying you know why don't you seek me first thank you for your word that challenges us father i'm praying that those today who are needing a revelation, Father, that those who are needing to have a hope in you and a future in you heard it today through your holy word. Father, those who are here today, uh, maybe with their families, maybe just uh, struggling today, and they're needing for you to say this same scripture as as you told to your people in Jeremiah, Father, just that you do have a future and a hope for them, God. I pray that they believe that and they rest on that this morning. Father, thank you. God, for your holy word that that just continues to remind us and teach us that we can trust you. We love you, God, in Jesus' name, amen.